Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesday, which means that we you've got me live again. And this particular season is all about visible, getting out there, you getting getting out there, helping some people and really making a really big impact in the world with what it is that you do. Now, here's the thing that we know. We've been working a lot on you getting really clear on, on who you are, what you're all about, what your strengths are, and the way that you can really kind of leverage that. We've talked this season about you owning the different platforms on social media and you really shifting your thinking to it almost being like your very own channel where you can create whatever the hell content you like, where you can talk however you want, where you can really develop a strong, essentially develop a strong personal brand in a way that makes sense for you and in your style. The thing that we've got to get really clear on, and this is where uh, it beca this becomes really important, is you really need to know who the audience is that you want to tune in to your stuff. So I remember walking through, and you guys might have experienced this, walking through a shopping center and we've got the secret people like the that that stuff that's scraped from the bottom of the ocean floor and they want to lather you all up in order for you to be able to buy it right they're trying to sell you their skincare range and for me it's kind of like trying to dodge uh it's like an obstacle course trying to dodge all of those um things through the middle of the mall uh, alternatively, it can be a little bit like going and walking past a Baker's Delight or another bakery and they're trying to shove all of those bread samples down your throat, right? Now, here's the thing. Not everyone wants that stupid secret stuff. Even if it is great, it annoys me. And not everyone is going to want your damn bread either. So it's not about you getting out into the marketplace and trying to shove your product or your service down your audience's throat. It's about instead of trying to ram it, we want to be able to connect with them. We want to be able to help them feel understood and feel heard. Really great example of this in terms of rapport building is this. So my husband and I walked into a car yard on the weekend and there was a gentleman sitting behind the counter doing some paperwork. And we walked through, we were in there for about five minutes before we were even approached or asked if we needed any help. The main reason we got asked if we wanted any help was because we walked literally to the car that was seated right next to his desk. Now, the thing with this was that we were opening the car doors, we were getting in the car and, and everything else like that. And he said, oh, do you guys need any help? Didn't, and then proceeded to tell us about all of these different things which he didn't ask us anything about what we were looking for, what we were hoping for, what was important to us in a vehicle. He didn't ask us any of that stuff. Good morning, Kelly. So it was really interesting because I, I mean, I knew what it was that I wanted, but he automatically really had my back up right from the get go. So the thing that we need to do, and we don't have the luxury online of asking questions all the time, right? Of, you know, what are you looking for? What do you need help with? What's really important to you? What don't you like about your current vehicle? What do you really want? We've got to understand what those questions are before we start marketing to our audience, right? Let me know if you're with me and let me know, please, if this is making sense. So, not everybody wants the bread. I don't want all the features of a vehicle shoved down my throat. I've got some questions that I need answered and I really want to feel like my business matters. You know, is I really want to feel like the person that I'm talking to actually cares and cares enough to ask me some questions and maybe get to know a little bit about my situation first of all. So if you think about your audience, What's important to them? It's probably important for them to feel heard, to feel understood, to not constantly being sold to. I was chatting with some clients just before this, uh, just before this live, and one of the topics of conversation was: if you go to a networking event, most people treat that as a, just a place to collect as many business cards as you like. It's like, yes, I just got twenty business cards. You know, I'm winning. I'm important. I'm relevant. 
where most people then get back and either put their business card, put those business cards that they've collected in the bin. They might go and add them to their email list, which is a whole other thing. You are not going to do that. It's really bad uh, unless they've given you permission, you know, consent, consent, consent. Uh, but it's really important that your people feel understood and heard. So how do we do that? Now, Invisible, I talk a lot about this in here and I actually talk about that not everybody wants your damn bread in the book. But really the thing that we've got to remember is that communication is a two-way street. Now, Kelly, I'm going to pick on you because you, you've commented and this is something that you say reasonably regularly. She's like, Nicola, how do you know what's going on in my head? And Kelly and I don't talk every day. Yes, she's been a client of mine. Yes, she's been to events and is, is coming to events next year. But I don't know what's going on in her brain on a daily basis. But I can make a pretty good educated choice around what it is that I'm going to talk about because I know her mindset. Not hers specifically, but I know the mindset of my audience. And a lot of the time, the stuff with my audience is that they get they get a bit scared, they get a bit confused, they self-sabotage, you may not be seeing results as fast as what you may like, and it's about making sure that you keep on going. It's about looking for other ways to be able to bring you into your marketing versus me trying to make you do stuff the way that I do it, you know, because that's not how I want you to do it. I, I would love you to work within a framework, but I want you to do it in the way that you want to be able to do it. So what are the big things that your audience is going through? So the first thing that I want you to think about is what are all of their problems? And then and number one, the big thing is like, you're not going to be able to determine or imagine or make an educated guess, for want of a better word, an estimation about what their problems are if you can't imagine what that person looks like in your head. Now, the caveat to all of this is that a niching exercise, which is this, or niching if you're American, uh, the, the, the caveat to all of this is that this is a framework that you can utilize in order to make your marketing life easier. It does not mean that if you are presented with someone and they, and they say, well, I've got this problem, and if it doesn't fit in your list of the, of, the, of the ones and zeros that you've done around your audience, it doesn't mean you're not gonna help them. If you can help solve their problem, then you're going to help them. It just helps you to write a book. It helps you to create marketing. It helps you to, to create a video. It helps you to do your blogs. It helps you to form your podcast. It helps you to work out what intellectual property you're going to share and disseminate out there into the market. So that's the caveat to all of this. It does not exclude anyone from your services should you choose to take them on and provided that you can help them, of course. So here's the thing we need to do. Number one, imagine, actually before we even get into the problems, I want you to imagine either someone that you've worked with or someone that you might like to work with, right? Give them a name. Give them a gender, give them a, an age, give them a family or not, give them a car, give them a suburb. As if you were writing a novel, I want you to work out who the main character is in your marketing. Right, so who's your main character? And then you're going to go, all right, so I know that my main character's name is Alex. They're 35 years old and they've got all of these problems. So maybe their mindset's you know, screwy. Maybe they left school at year 11 and, and they don't have any confidence. Maybe they've got a wealth of experience and yet they still suffer from self-doubt. Maybe they're overweight. Maybe they feel sluggish. Maybe they are all jacked up on adrenaline and, and can't get it out. Maybe they're unfit. Maybe they are scared of the camera. Maybe they're afraid of flying. Maybe they smoke. I don't know, like what are their problems? trying to think about different people. Like I know there's some hypnosis people in, in my community. I know there's some coaches in the community. Uh, maybe one of their problems is, is that the HR team uh, are not managing their staff. Who knows? What are all of the problems that your audience has? Now, I'd encourage you to get to a list of maybe about 54 or more. 
Now that number came about because I was sitting on a plane in May 2015 where I came up with this exercise because I was trying to build a framework for me to work out who it was that I wanted to talk to in my marketing. I wanted to re-niche. So I've been doing this in, in, in this business since 2010. Uh, and I also did it in a previous business. I realized this morning, I, I started a business, another business in 2006, another online business. And you know, I've been, I've been using these same strategies since then in order to really connect with people. But where this one came about, I was sitting on a plane and I was like, right, Olivia, my person's Olivia. Uh, what are all of her problems? And I just started listing them all in all the different segments of their life. So we've got fun, social, uh, where's my little post-it note gone? Fun, social, family, soul, finances, health, mindset, relationships, business. What are the problems that this person has in all of those facets of their life? It's gonna give you a really good, robust person, right? With lots of stuff. The problems do not need to be related to what you solve, right? They don't need to be related to your service necessarily. It just gives you a way in, in terms of building rapport. Secondly to that, what I want you to then do is go, all right, now that we've got all of those 54 problems, that's that's great and, and perhaps quite you know disconcerting because wow, this person's got a lot of stuff going on. What's the, what are their goals? What are their dreams? What are their desires? What is their, in an ideal world, what would they love more than anything at all? And again, break it down into those sections. So fun, social, family, soul, finances, health, mindset, relationship, business, or career, depending on what it is that you, what you're doing. And get as many goals, dreams, desires, wishes, all of those down that you can. You know, what are they, if money was no object, what do they really want? If time was no object, what do they really want? If there were no barriers, what is it that they really want? And why is that important to them? And what does that look like to them? So again, we've kind of got this sphere over here of, of all of their problems and all of their stuff. And then over on this other side, we've got this really beautiful, robust sphere about where they want to be, what they would really like, what their, what their secret goals, dreams, does it, maybe not so secret, goals, dreams, and desires are that uh, they really want to work, that they want to work towards. Your job then is to go, okay, so how can I build a bridge with your content from these problems over here to help them get over here, right? So you can solve a problem around motivation. You can solve problems around mindset. You can solve problems around health. You can solve problems around money mindset. You can solve problems around better communication. You can solve problems around really great family life, about daily habits, goal setting, uh, time management, um, values, all of this type of stuff. So it helps you to go, right, well, I've got this person that's got all these problems and then I've got all of this over here. What's the bridge that links these two together? Now, the cool thing about this is that even if you're, if you're an accountant and you know that you've got, or a bookkeeper and you've got a client or your audience is someone who runs their own business, been in business for maybe three years, they are frustrated when it comes to money. They might have been let down by other providers. And what they really want is to feel empowered. They want to be able to look at their numbers without anxiety. They want to know that they can jump in and see a report really quickly. They want someone to help them to understand what those numbers mean. You could then provide something for free. It's like the, the ultimate money mastery toolkit right? Maybe it's a spreadsheet. Maybe it's an infographic. Maybe it's around mindset around money, whatever it might be. Something that's going to take that person from there and then over to there, right? Now, it's really hard if you don't know who your audience is. It can be really challenging to work out what you're even going to create for free if you don't know who they are and if they don't know what their big problems are and if they don't know what they what it is that they, if you don't know what it is that they really want you're going to be making a lot of guessing and you're also actually going to be doing a lot of assuming 
So the point around niching is that it's about communication, right? Because the only way that we can build rapport is by having an idea about what's going on in their head. So invisible, if you have a copy of this, we've got goals and dreams. We've got mindset, stress points. What do they really dislike about their life, their health, their financial situation? And this one I really love. Don't love, but it, it helps you to get a really great insight. It's what is the 3 a.m. story that they tell themselves and the worst case scenario? And how does that relate to what it is that you do? All right, so you've got to do this work, first of all, before you even start marketing. Marketing is a tactic. You've got to do everything else before that, before you start going out. Otherwise, it's a little bit, you know, John Wayne shooting from the hip. All right, Kelly said, you're always in my head. You know me. Oh, yes, you do. You know us so well. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. The next step is to make sure that the, the work that you've done is actually hitting the mark. So the next thing for you to do is to be able to interview people, right? So I really want you to interview people, and this is what you can say. Help, can you help me out? I'm spending some time working on my business recently, and I've been set a challenge to interview 10 people with the, who match the following parameters. And you can list out, it could be female, male, business owner, CEO, whatever it might be, who is really struggling with ABC. If you can spare 30 minutes of your time, I'd really appreciate it. So I go through some examples of that in the book. And then you're going to do the, the problems and make sure that you've got all of that really, really clear from there, okay? And then, and only then, can we then start to develop what your content plan is going to look like. You've got to know who the audience is. Good morning, Tamara. So, you know, the, the thing here is that you'll have a bunch of people that will say, oh, you should do this, you should talk about that, you could do this, you could do that. And if, if what I want to encourage you is that if it doesn't fit within the, you know, those two spheres of who your people are and, and if you can't see a way to bridge it across, then you want to be really discerning about the content that you're putting out there. You want to be discerning about the checklist, the PDFs, the videos, all of this stuff that takes time and energy to create. Be really discerning about what it is that you're actually putting out there. Because if it doesn't to me, if it doesn't fit your audience and the problems that they have, and if it doesn't help them achieve the goals, the dreams, the desires that they want and, they ha and the things that they want to have, then... It's a don't share it, don't talk about it, don't do it, put it over in a car park, in a car park book or a car park flip chart or something somewhere that this might be a nice to have later. Because sometimes we have these really funny brain farts. We have these brain sparks, brain fart moments where it's like, oh, that'd be really cool to talk about that. You know, I could talk about energy healing uh, and the importance of that that it's played in my life. But right now, it doesn't tie into the messaging for visible in fact it would it may actually distract if i started talking for three weeks about energy healing people might be like mm, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a disconnect here it's not really matching right so you want to make sure that what you are wanting to talk about ties into your audience it ties into what it is that your what your overarching message is for the whole year and 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 things like that so audience is really cool Keystone, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really big foundational piece of work that does take time to do. If you think that this is something you're going to be able to knock over in an hour, you haven't done it properly, okay? You have not done it properly. It takes time. It takes refinement. If you're going to do it well, it's probably an interview some people, and I want you to interview a good 10 people. It's going to take time for you to do that. You're probably looking at one and a half to two weeks, right? Because you've got to interview people, you've got to do your summaries, you've got to do some thinking. The biggest problem that my people have when they go and put their marketing out and it's not working, the reason for that is that they haven't allowed themselves the time and the space to think first 
and create all of this knowledge around who their niche is, first of all. They usually just jump straight in. I'm like, well, you gotta go back and do that work now. And then that ends up being rework and it actually takes them longer to get the job done. So if you want marketing and content that is going to work sooner rather than later, please spend the time, invest the time into doing this activity, doing it well. The great thing about this is that while you're interviewing people, you will probably find some things out about them or about their patterns or some language in there that you just don't like. And that's great because then you can have another piece of paper that's like, oh, avoid that. Don't use that phrase or avoid this type of behavioral profile or whatever it might be. Okay, so it gives you some really great polar opposites with, with what to talk about and what not to talk about as well. All right, cool. So that is us for today, uh, all about audience. Now, next week, we're going to be expanding upon this again. So I very strongly encourage you, a little bit of homework uh, for those of you playing along at home. I really encourage you, if you haven't refined your niche in the last six months, or if you haven't done this activity to this depth, you need to do it again. Hey, if your marketing isn't working, if you're not getting signups, if you're not having uh, people watching your stuff, if people aren't commenting, if people aren't saying to you, oh, that was, you know, that was really cool. I loved what you did with that. Then, you know, maybe it's time to re-niche. So my name is Nicola. If you have any questions, make sure you let me know. It'd be lovely to answer them for you. If you need a copy of the book, you can see uh, there's a shop now button on the Facebook page. You can go get one for yourself. Other than that, go rock on, go help some people, get visible, and I will see you all tomorrow morning at nine. Catch you guys. Bye.